Hi. Well, if you've seen any of my recent videos, then you must know that my band The Watch has recently released a new album on all streaming services, and that we also had a nice release party on which we played all songs of that new album, as well as some others from previous albums. Well, during that release party we also recorded the whole performance, but we discovered later that the sample rate of the mixer that we used during that performance was not set to the same value as the sample rate of Cubase that was recording the performance. So we basically ended up with a whole Cubase project with audio files that did not match the sample rate of the Cubase project. Now you can correct that of course, so we did, but this seemed like a good opportunity to me to make a video about what happens when you have audio files with mismatched sample rates in your Cubase project and various ways to correct that. So let's go. Now, as you probably all know, the sample rate of an audio file specifies how many samples per second have been captured of an audio signal. Typical values are 44,100 samples per second, 48,000 samples per second, 96,000 samples per second, etc. Now, when you record audio in Cubase, this is where you set the sample rate. So this is an empty project. If you go to project, project setup, the record file format determines how Cubase records audio files and the sample rate is specified over here. So I have a Cubase project which expects audio files to contain 48,000 samples for every second of playback. The bit depth determines how much data is in each sample, but that's a bit less important for what I'm going to show you now. Now for this demonstration I'm going to make use of a song that I got from Streambeats, which is a service that provides copyright free music for Twitch streamers and YouTubers. And I'll provide the link to this service down in the description, you can check it out, it's free. Now the song that I'm going to use for this demonstration is called Shiver, and I have the audio file available in two formats. One file has 44,100 samples per second, and the other file has 48,000 samples per second. So let's first import the file with the correct sample rates, so you can see how it is supposed to sound. So after dragging the file in the project view, Cubase provides me with the following options. And basically none of these options are selected because the file is already in the correct location and in the correct sample rate and bit depth. So let's go on with importing and let's listen to how it is supposed to sound. I feel it on my skin today All the things I try to wash away yeah, so a nice mellow pop track. Now let's see what happens if I import the same song, but now from the file with the incorrect sample rate of 44k100. Now Cubase again shows the import options dialog, but it now also suggests that I change the sample rate of this file from 44100 to 48000, and it also suggests that I update the bit depth from 16 bit to 24 bit. So I'm not too bothered about the bit depth now, but let's actually do the sample rate conversion right on import. And if we now compare the files. I feel it on my skin today. All the things I try to wash away. They've been waiting for my walls to thin. Everything is perfectly fine because Cubase has already done the sample rate conversion for us on import. For example, if I look at the pool now, you can see that this is my original 48 kilohertz file. Sample rate. As you can see over here is 48 kilohertz and even for the 44 kilohertz file that i just imported the sample rate is 48 kilohertz because it was converted when i imported it let's do that again without converting the file on import to simulate what happens if you have a file with the incorrect sample rate in your project so i'm going to get rid of this track i'm also going to get rid of this file from the pool it's in the thrash and i'm also going to even empty the thrash and erase the file so let's import the 44k file again. And this time I'm not going to convert the sample rate. So it will be in the project with the incorrect sample rate. You can immediately tell the difference here because the file is a lot shorter. And that's because even though the file is of the same song, so it should be equal length really, Cubase has been set to a sample rate of 48,000 kilohertz. So it will play back 48,000 samples for every second, but the file only contains 44,100 samples per second. So to compensate, Cubase squishes the playback time of the file and it also sounds different. This is the original. I feel it on my skin today. And the incorrect sample rate sounds like this. I feel it on my skin today. All the things I try, I try to wash away. Waiting for my walls to thin. So the pitch has gone up 
and the tempo has gone up because Cubase is playing back this file with a sample rate quicker than it was recorded at. Now if you end up in a situation like this, what can you do in Cubase to correct this? Well, first of all, let's have another look at the pool. And in here you can see that the 48K file, yes, is 48 kilohertz. And the 44K file, we now imported it without correction, is at 44.1 kilohertz. Now one way to correct this is to do it straight from the pool. If you right click over here, you have the option to convert files and the conversion options immediately come up with the same settings that you set for the project so 48 kilohertz and 24 bit bit depth stereo interleaved file and you can also specify which file format you want it's a WAV file in this case so i want to keep that but you could also convert it to any of the other lossless formats and the last option is to specify what you want to happen with the original files so it's now set to new files but i could also replace the original file or I can set it to create a new file, but replace the file in the pool. But let's just create a new file now. You see that a second file was added in the pool, this one, which now has a sample rate of 48,000 kilohertz. So if we now import this file into the project view again, so this was corrected in the pool, and you can see that it now has the correct length again. And if we listen to it, it sounds correct as well. I feel it on my skin today. All the things I try to wash away They've been waiting for my walls to thin Yeah, so that's one way to correct an audio file in your project with the incorrect sample rate. And before I show you the second method, if you like this video or find it useful, please give it a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe to the channel and ring the little bell icon if you want to get notified when I publish another video. If you really find this useful, you can use the super thanks button below the video or buy anything at these stores after you've clicked one of the affiliate links that I have in the description below. Then I get a small percentage of anything you buy without any extra cost to you. But let's get back to the second way to correct an incorrect sample rate. Now this file still has the incorrect sample rate. So the second way is that you can go to audio, processes, resample. And this again shows you that the file sample rate is 44,100. And you can specify a new sample rate, which can be very specific. But let's stick to the sample rate which we have in the project. It also shows the difference in percentage compared to the original sample rate. And let's apply this. And as you can see, the track with the incorrect sample rate has now been processed. And the length is now correct. And the audio is also correct. I feel it on my skin today. All the things I try to wash away. They've been waiting for my walls to th Yeah, so that's one more way to do it. If we now look in the pool, you can see that we did not actually get another file because this file is still at 44K sample rate. This was the original 48K file. And this was the file that was converted from 44K to 48K in the pool. So you might wonder where is the audio for this track now then? And that's in a separate directory because you've actually done direct offline processing. If you go to edits over here, you can see that this is actually the audio file that was resampled to 48 kilohertz. And this is what you're now actually hearing when you're playing the audio on this track. So that's one small difference between these two matters, if that matters to you. Is the result exactly the same? We can check that as well. For example, we can invert the phase of the file that was converted by resampling and then play it at the same time as the file that was converted in the pool. And if they're exactly the same, we should hear nothing. And that's exactly the case, we hear nothing. So the end result is the same no matter which method you choose. Now another thing that might be important when you're recording a live performance is that you may want to have the tracks align on the grid exactly. Or the other way around, you may want to align the grid in Cubase exactly with what's in the audio file. Because if your drummer didn't play to a click track, the tempo may slightly vary and it can be much easier to edit this audio in Cubase if you have an aligned grid and audio. Now I of course have a separate video about that, which you can check out over here. Enjoy and see you soon. Mm -hmm.